Good morning, welcome to week number two of the fall 2020 semester. Um, my name is Alan again, Business 240. This message is intended to cover answers to the questions that you've been posing over the last few days for those of you who have already started using both the Canvas system and LinkedIn to Pearson My Lab, which is roughly 40% of you. Uh, the other 60% of you, uh, this message will be uh, focusing on getting you going into Pearson. I, uh, so let's get going. The uh, first thing that I'll do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share to your Canvas dashboard. So one thing that you should see are all my different classes. The way you get here again, you go to dvc.edu, you click on the Canvas link at the very top. That takes you to a page that has a red login button for Canvas. You uh, press the login and uh, with your Insight uh, login name and password, you get to your dashboard where you can enter any of the sections that you've enrolled in for courses this fall. In my case, I'm gonna use uh, section 2557 as our demo section here. And the first thing you should do, um, if this is your first time getting onto Canvas, or not, even if it's not, is you should go to this My Lab and Mastering link. Go to My Lab and Mastering link, and uh, there should appear a yellow button at the center of the screen after a few seconds, depending on the, your connection speed. Uh, if this yellow button does not appear, then there are five things you need to do. So I'm gonna list the five things on a whiteboard. The first thing you ought to do is go to settings for your browsers. The second thing you should do is uh, clear the cache and the history. The third thing you ought to do is under site contents within setting, you should allow for pop-ups or disable pop-up blocking. Another thing you should do is allow for add-ins. What this allows for is for uh, web software, web applications to run online. You should also, um, should also allow for third party cookies. What this does is it enables your system and the remote system that has your web applications to connect more quickly using the cache. So after you clear the cache, you then allow for the future items that get stored in your cache to connect your computer and your account, your Canvas account, to your Pearson account and to your web account. Less important are for you to allow for Java, although you should because some routines that you're gonna be running in the software that comes with your Pearson license require Java scripting. And you should also allow for Flash Player from Adobe especially if you have an older edition or older version of a browser. By the way, if you have old equipment that is not very good at helping you get through the course content, uh, you should check our resources, uh, our DVC student resources, to see if you can borrow uh, equipment that is more up to date and that has uh, loaded versions of software that, um, that run better. Uh, you should also um, allow for ads, especially in uh, for advertisement, especially in in Safari, especially if you're using a Macintosh. The reason for that is that uh, sometimes um, 
software that is being run remotely and software where you enter an answer on your system and it gets graded on a remote system and the feedback comes back to you requires connections that are very similar to ads that uh, you respond to when you're interested in buying something on Pinterest or, or on Wish or on Amazon or whatever. So if you allow for those things, then you exit your settings and you reconnect the canvas and click on Pearson on my lab and mastering. And you should see the yellow button. So those are the instructions for that. So you might want to pause right now and take a picture of these uh, settings and then alter these settings. So I hope you can see the settings that I'm talking about. And, and now I'm going to go back to the uh, screen. So I'm back at the Pearson screen. I'm going to click on Open My Lab and Mastering. And uh, the first thing that will appear on the first time you ever come here is not what you're seeing right now. This is your perennial screen. This is your permanent screen once you get a 14-day trial license to begin with, and also once you translate your license from temporary to full-time. Uh, this license can be obtained by access code, uh, by entering an access code that you purchase at the DVC bookstore. Or you could buy the license for less money, for a little under $100, on uh, this system by, via debit or credit card or PayPal. Okay. So I'm going to bypass the registration process. If you still need help with the registration process, please send me an email saying, can you show me the registration video, please? And I will happily send you a five minute clip on this. The most important part about this site is called the Assignments tab. The Assignments tab contains your entire calendar of 30 activities for the whole semester from the first activity that is due next week, September 10th. So no, you are not late turning in assignments. First lab is due on September 10th. To the last activity, which is the final exam on due on December 11th. All activities are currently open. All activities are untimed. There's no time limit, as you can see, on any activity. All activities have in and out privileges, which means you should enter them work as much as you can and then when you close to leave it'll remember everything you've done and you can pick up where you left off on a second or third visit so there's unlimited in and out access to the activities the activities are three kinds labs quizzes and exams labs are very different from quizzes and exams in a lab you will have questions and these questions are like learning activities. So when you click on them, a new window will pop up and you can then open this window. You can read the problem, read the directions, read the context of the question, and then answer these questions per the material in the content. So how do you access the content that you need to learn in order to answer these questions? Well, the way to do that, notice that uh, I am going to answer this question and check my answer and see if it's right. Oh, it's right, so it's a good job. And if I uh, answer a question and the answer is incorrect, it'll tell me that's incorrect. Now, we usually are very reflective, reflexive people when we're using systems like this, and we immediately close things that look wrong. Don't do that read what went wrong and try to learn from what went wrong so that you can then enter and check your answer again. And if your answer is correct on the second try, your grade will be upgraded in both ways, in the sense of getting a higher grade and in the sense of recognizing that you learned from your mistake. 
So the lab works by trial and error, just like uh, the practice of grit that we talked about in last week's module, in the Canvas module of what is grit and why it's important for your learning and for your grade. In this case, labs are interactive activities that are there to help you learn by doing and by, um, you know, making mistakes and learning from the mistakes. So what if I hit a question and I don't understand what the question means? Well, at that point, I should close the lab. When I close the lab, it takes me back to the assignment and notice how I have a green check with a red X next to the question I was working on with an update on my grade. I can go back into that question anytime I want, now or in later sessions, and I can keep working on problems until I get them right. Okay, so that's what I mean by unlimited in and out privileges and no limits, no time limit on activities. And you have three attempts to get a part of a question right, and you also have two whole do-overs on an entire question to try to maximize your points to the permitted maximum per question so that you can attain as much as possible of the total points of the question. Now, if you're looking for resources to help you learn the content, my first stop there is where it says chapter contents. Chapter contents contain the chapters of your textbook and they also contain video presentations of the chapter. So when you click on these video presentations, separate windows appear with very short introductions to the entire chapter. So essentially these videos are outlines of each and every chapter from the author's perspective, from the textbook author's perspectives. The other place under main menu that you look at besides chapter contents where, where your book is at is you look at course tools. And among the many course tools are documents that are shared by me to you. And these documents are separated by content module of the course. So depending on whether you're looking at chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 14, there are PowerPoints, PowerPoint slides for every chapter that we're going to cover in this textbook. And there are also my notes for each and every chapter that we cover in the class. So when I click on exam one module here, for example, you will see a whole host of sets of documents and PowerPoint slides and sometimes Excel spreadsheets uh, that I uh, basically have created as notes, my notes for the content that accompany this, these videos. And oftentimes you will find these, uh, this material also under modules in your canvas. So the modules, if you look at chapter one module, notice how there's two, a document and a PowerPoint slide. That material is to help you succeed in your acquisition of knowledge from chapter one and so on and so forth through the end of the semester. So all modules are there containing very much the same information as these notes. Although there are some documents in these notes that are not in your Canvas module. So that's, uh, that's why I always tell you to look through document sharing and go shopping for problems and uh, shopping for, uh, for example, here, making frequency and contingency tables. It's a PowerPoint slide. Well, that PowerPoint slide is accompanied by um, a video, a video that I will that I have loaded onto uh, YouTube. And from YouTube, I, I refer, I create a reference into Canvas about that YouTube video on that content. The next item is the HTML ebook. This ebook is really good. It's different than the chapter contents in that it is a scripted textbook so that you can use it in conjunction with applications like Kurzweil, which helps uh, get fonts that are, you know, larger size fonts for people who may need help with the content. And also um, you can pick the content and in Kurzweil, it, it'll read it for you 
and, uh, and that may be helpful in your studying of the material. So, what else do we have? Uh, we also have on their main menu your grade book. And this grade book tracks your points earned really well. And you also have this stat crunch. Stat crunch is included in the licensing of everything. You don't have to pay anything else. You just click on the stat crunch website and it'll open a uh, part of your license that basically looks like an Excel spreadsheet. It looks like a data, a place where you can put a data table. You can put in the rows information about uh, individual observations or cases. You can put in the columns individual attributes or variables that make up the entire data set. So a data set usually comes in a table form. Uh, who the data are about is described by row. What the data are about is by column. Um, and we're going to be using uh, mostly two uh, menu items in this software. The data menu item, which will allow us to compute expressions. That's when we use the software as a calculator. And stat, the stat menu will be the most used menu in this course. We're gonna use the first six or seven items in the menu very extensively. Every item in the menu will be demoed in a video my of my own creation as well as you can go to help and go to youtube videos and watch every single item in stat crunch on youtube through the stat crunch channel on youtube so a lot of times that i'm recording videos i'll be telling you which videos are the relevant ones on a chapter by chapter basis so that's the main uh, introduction to Pearson, your assignments, your gradebook, your software that we're going to use to do math, to do statistical computations, and the course tools and chapter contents, which is where your videos, PowerPoints, documents, demonstration problems are located. I hope this video was useful. Please register into Pearson My Lab no later than September 2nd. If you're having difficulties doing that, please contact me or visit me during one of our in face-to-face -face confer dates. Um, the next face-to-face uh, -face confer date will be tomorrow, September 1st, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Today, I have something called curriculum committee meeting at 2.30, so I'm gonna have a very short presence online from 1 to 2 p.m. at the uh, earlier sent uh, invitation. I'll resend the invitation for our confer times. Our confer times are officially right now Monday through Thursday, 1 to 4 p.m. Um, but actually, um, the Monday one, I may have to move around due to the curriculum meetings that are happening. Uh, from 2.30 to 4 p.m. on Mondays only. But uh, hopefully this video is helpful. Keep in touch. I will try to respond to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to your emails in so far as I can. Right now I'm still a little bit overwhelmed trying to get ad codes out for students who want to add this co these courses. And, uh, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.